Welcome to Memorial Cooking Innovations. I'm Tim Scallon, registered dietitian. And I'm Manuel Marini, executive chef. You know, Chef Manny, what I think people like most about Memorial Cooking Innovations? They like a sexy chef with lots of charisma. Well, I think that's part of it. <laughs> no, but you know what? I think they really enjoy about having fun while you're cooking. And not only that, but you're learning and eating healthy. What do well, you think? Well, I, th I think that's part of it too, aside from the sexy chef part. But also, uh, I think that people uh, think that eating healthy means that they have to make sacrifices and not eat what they like. And what we've learned on Memorial Cooking Innovations is that uh, we can, it's, uh, eating healthy is really more about inclusion than it is about self-denial. That the foods that we include and the choices that we make uh, add balance to our diet. Yeah, who would think that you could put chicken fried steak on a healthy menu? Nowhere but on Memorial Cooking, Cooking Innovation. Up. That's huh? true. The recipe is pretty simple. We're going to do an egg wash. Okay? okay. We're going to okay. do an egg wash with a little bit of garlic. All right. Right, and let me get my bowl And right some here. people may not know when you say an egg wash, they may not really know what you're talking about. But if, if, you, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll explain that. Yeah, term. definitely, definitely. Uh, so an egg wash basically is where you get something, you take egg and milk and put it together, and you're going to dredge your, whatever you're breading in the egg Chicken, wash. Chicken, fish, beef, in this case it's beef. So yeah. we're going to go ahead and just add a whole egg. Okay, and so, and then after the egg wash, then you're going to put it in the, in the dry mix, right? Right. Okay, and this is this is and not this is any different than steak. traditional chicken fried steak. I mean, our grandmothers did chicken fried steak the same way. Now we just added a little bit of skin milk to it, just to thin okay. it out. So we're just gonna whip it. Yep. Okay. Okay. We're gonna add a little bit of garlic to All give right. it some flavor. Yep. You know, in this dish, there are about three things that we do thereabouts to make this chicken fried steak healthy. Now the first thing that we do is the obvious thing. We have to shrink that Texas sized chicken fried steak down to a four ounce serving and that way we have more room on our plate to you to put other healthy foods in there. So okay. there's that inclusion thing. We're including some uh, fresh vegetables to go with this uh, lean beef. Okay, I'm gonna put this to the side. Okay. Here we're gonna grab a little bit of the cornmeal. Yep and a little bit of flour, okay? We're just gonna do it because this is where we're gonna pat it down with. Okay. Okay? All right. Then I got the chopsticks there. Now, we're gonna pinch it. When we say a pinch, right? A pinch yeah. of salt. Yeah, I always have add... to remind you of that. Yeah. yeah, and you're getting good at it. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm around you. You know, uh, they train dietitians on things like that. Okay, so here we're just gonna pinch, right? Okay. Now, one thing that you asked me was whole black pepper. Yeah, right? and yep. I got me one of these black pepper milk. Yeah, and I'm, I like it. I like it because you use whole; it'll last you for a good long time. But yep. you get the freshness. Yeah. Then just your regular table. I like both. This is something that maybe gives a little more flavor to. Now I'm surprised you're doing your pepper on the meat rather than in your dry mix. Tell me about that. I want it to stick really good. Okay. On the meat. Yeah. So you're gonna kind of you're gonna Pat almost kind of massage yeah. that in a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Okay. All right. I got, we got the, by the way, we have the yep. pan going with the yep. little olive oil. Yep, he's going good. It's going good, okay, so we're going to pat this down. Now, we're going to take this. This is and, the egg wash part. And here's a very important thing. Okay. Never do too much egg. You could always add more egg. Again, we're throwing away stuff if, yeah. when we have leftover because yep. we've got to discard this, yep. right? It's right. no good for, for later, so. We're going to go ahead and drench this real good. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and pat it here. Let me fix this real good. And so we've got a lean cut of round steak here, and we and these round steaks are tin, tenderized. Sometimes people call this a cube steak. And, and you can buy a chuck too. You know, cut yeah. it nice and then pound it yourself. You yeah, know but I mean? now your round steak's going to be leaner than that chuck. And okay, so, that's true. So see, that's we're using a lean cut of beef here, and just to give you an example on that. Uh, this cut of, of round steak has about 8.9 grams of fat. Let's just say 9 grams of fat in this serving. In a, uh, in a chicken uh, thigh, there are 8.5 grams of fat. Uh, so about the same. Now, granted, a chicken breast is 3 grams of fat. Okay, so chicken breast, now you add the skin back in, that brings it back up to 8 grams of fat. So we're in the ballpark with a piece of chicken on this. So now we're just going to brown it on one side, turn it around, and we're going to th 
finish it in the oven. Okay. A pan like this will probably give us about three or four steaks. Yep. So we want a nice gold, golden brown. How's that look, right. Tim? So you're getting getting a good brown. And so really the objective on in this step is not really to cook the inside. You really just want to get sear a, get, it from the outside. Get just, some browning. Right. And then okay. we got our oven at 350. Okay. Go ahead and we'll stick it in here. Okay. All While right. that is cooking, okay. we continue with the rest of our stuff. Okay, now I want to just say a couple of words about this because this is an important part of how we make a chicken fried steak healthy. We started with the lean cut of beef. Then, instead of deep frying that meat, we, we're getting our browning with just a little bit of uh, oil and then finishing it in the oven. Now, what about if we're not going to add as much fat to this, which we did, and we're putting it in the oven, then we we got to watch out for... Uh, Overcooking, Overcooking it. Overcooking it, right. Yeah. So we want it to be, this is the best way to do it because mm -hmm. we're going to always open it and leave mm -hmm. the door open for a little bit while mm -hmm. we finish everything up. Yep. Okay. Uh, let me ready, come for your, ready for I your am. Uh, Just be okay. always careful when you're grabbing it out of the oven. Now, yep. a lot of times when I do this, people go, you stick the pan in the oven. There are some pans that you can actually stick mm -hmm. in the oven where the handle doesn't even burn or anything like that, but it will yep. be hot, okay? Yeah. So we can see the nice chicken fried steak. Beautiful Look at that. browning there. All right. Okay. So if you pass me a plate, Tim. Yep. Well, I'm going to do. As soon as I get them out, if I had four of them, we're going to make the gravy. Okay. Okay, Tim? Okay. So, so you yeah, let me get right my... Here. Let me get here, my... Here we go, right here. You got it there? Yep. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Go ahead and... You want him right here? Right there. Perfect. You know, this recipe is a perfect example of how we incorporate a traditional dish into a healthy eating pattern. Uh, here's some of the rules that we follow in order to do that. Use lean meats. Use skim dairy products. Minimize use of full fat cheeses. Include vegetables and fruits in every meal. Include healthy fats like olive oil. Make use of functional foods like fat-free half and half or sugar-free whip top. Cooking from scratch, reducing sodium from pre-made foods and added salt. Replace lost flavor from fat and sodium with flavor from fresh foods, herbs, and low-sodium broths. And trade in that deep fry for a saute pan. So what do we do about that cream gravy that needs to go on that chicken fried steak, Chef Manny? Remember how we pulled that traditional gravy and made it a heart healthier one with a, using skin milk? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, on this one right here, one thing that you were talking to me the other, the other mm -hmm, day mm -hmm. on the, uh, at the, in the kitchen was that you, did, you tried to do this recipe, right? Mm -hmm, and yep. you added red onions, and it made it look like as if it had meat on the gravy. Remember that? Well, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, 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 you know the, what makes this gravy? Okay, first of all, our recipe calls for butter. We start with butter. So, but what makes this gravy healthy is using skim milk instead of whole milk, okay? And uh, that's, you know, we, at home I thought, well, let's, uh, I'm just gonna try this. And I had some red onion. And you know how you see a sausage gravy sometimes? Well, if you make the same gravy, the same way our recipe uh, has it, and you know, you can download our recipes uh, at memorialhealth.org. Uh, if you make this the same way and you dice up some red onion, and before you start the gravy, you've got your butter, and then you're going to saute that onion until it's soft. Ta-da, I got you a red oh, onion. Oh, you brought some. I okay. brought you one. Okay. Okay, so I just wanted to do that real quick. Well, Remember, it, we have the pan. And the good thing about doing a gravy right after we pull the beef, because yeah. you got all the flavors there from uh, the beef. From the beef, yes. So you really don't need beef. Yeah, you know that's what I mean? right. That's so, right. I got well, your red onion here, Tim. And so, uh, uh, you know, that's one of the fun things about cooking is sometimes your best recipes are uh, just something that you just thought of. Well, you had some red onion, and uh, wouldn't that add some good flavor to this gravy? Nice flavor and mm -hmm. color. Yeah, okay, and so some texture. We have this right here, Tim. I'm gonna okay. pull this out of your way. Yep. I'm gonna go ahead and put this. You can actually, if you don't mind, go ahead and put the, your- Green beans on there? Your green beans, okay. yeah. This is still a little hot. As you can see it sizzle. Yep. So we're gonna add a little bit of flour, just a little bit, because we're making the gravy, right, Tim? Yep. So we just wanna uh, the flour is gonna help absorb all the the oil and the fat from the beef, the little fat that was released, and the onions. Okay. Cook that off a little bit so it doesn't taste 
yeah. floury, and then it, we're going to add our skin milk. Any uh, any gravy or sauce that you make, if you're going to use flour, and this would also be true if you were using cornstarch, another thickener, uh, the recipe always tells you to bring it to a boil and boil it for one minute. <clears throat> and the reason is so that you cook the starch so it doesn't taste pasty. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to let it simmer off. See how it thickened up it real nice? Beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Still. You now know, I think ready. I like this better than the traditional gravy. Now, notice how he's using a small amount of gravy there. Put a little uh, bit on the mashed potato. Yeah, what do you think? Okay. Yeah, it's supposed to be two tablespoons. Okay, so I think you were actually just just that was right. pretty good. Well, See? a tablespoon is three teaspoons, and, and, and actually you only used five of those. So, so you, did thing, yeah. you did okay, good. good. You did good. You did good. good. We covered the whole thing. I mean, it's we didn't beautiful. have to overdo ourselves. Yeah, it's beautiful. Hi, my name is Manuel Marini, Executive Chef. Do you know exactly when the right temperature for your, cook, your cooked food is? Well, today's topic is going to be about thermometers. You can find these in the local store. One of the most important thing is that when we do our thermometers, we stick it in there. How do I know that it is calibrated? Here's the tip for today. Grab a nice glass of ice and just pour some water. Water starts freezing at 32 or below. So we want to make sure that the water is nice and cold. Then we'll stick our thermometer in there and let it sit for about a minute and a half to two minutes. As you do that, you'll see the needle go down and down and down. Once it reaches 32, you're good. If it reaches 40, 50, that means that you'll be off temperature. If it reaches below 32, this could be undercooked. So my thing is there is a little nut right here that you can get some pliers and some of these thermometers actually have one that you can just twist. So what you do is you place it on the ice, you let it sit there for about a minute and a half to two minutes. Once it stops, then you adjust it by turning and you want it to hit about 32 degrees, okay? Once it hits 32 degrees, you know your, your, cal your, your thermometer is calibrated. Then we can take temperatures of ready to, ready to eat food at about 165 or above, especially when you're reheating some leftover. I'm Chef Manuel Marini, Executive Chef for Memorial Cooking Innovations. So if we use skim milk, we can have our cream gravy. You know what? We can use making sauces, we can do it in soups, we can do it in chowders. And by reducing the size of the meat portion, that means that we can add it more vegetables and add uh, fresh fruit. What do you think? Healthy choices. Wow, that's great. We had a fun, didn't we? You know, it is. It's when you start working together and thinking about how can I include. It's not so much about what can I do. I have to do without. It's exactly. about inclusion, isn't it? Yeah, it's adding it all together and coming out with healthier version of it. That's yeah, awesome. that still tastes good. That still tastes good. We'd like to thank our sponsors, uh, Brookshire's, a celebration of food and community, and uh, Sodexo. And we'd also like to thank our friends at City of Lufkin for distributing uh, Memorial Cooking Innovations. And especially, we'd like to thank you, our viewers. Because of you, Memorial Cooking Innovations is changing the world one, one bite, bite at a time. time.